your mom yes. is a celebrity. Mm -hmm. Tell more about that because your mom was on Full House. Mm -hmm. Her name's Candace Bure. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, most people in the 90s, like I grew up watching your mom. Mm -hmm. How was that for you just growing up with fame, growing up with a parent mm -hmm. that was a celebrity? Did that impact you negatively, positively? Mm -hmm. Just open up with that experience. What is up, Happy and Healthy? I am your host, Janine Amopola, and welcome back to another episode of Happy and Healthy. I hope you guys are doing good today. For me, it is a Thursday. Is it a Thursday? A Wednesday. Oh my gosh, it's hump day. No wonder why that explains some things. I feel a little out of it today, but it's been really, really great. Caleb and I have been vlogging today. Um, we had a great workout today. I'm about to go fix my hair and my nails. Valentine's Day is right around the corner. So I'm going to go get my nails fixed, I think. So when you're watching this, I'll still have my white chrome nails. Um, so I'm curious what to do. You guys can check my Instagram to see. This weekend, you guys, I'm also so excited. You guys can also check this out on my Instagram. I'm hosting a Galentine's Day workout event with my followers on Saturday the 10th. So I think this is going up after that, but you can check out my Instagram. I'm planning on doing more of these. So don't you guys worry because I know some people were bummed out. So I definitely want to do more of these more happy and healthy themed events all around. We may be coming to Nashville soon. So stay tuned. Just follow my Instagram. And yeah, but I am so excited about today's episode because this is the first guest of season five and I am bringing on Natasha Bure and I absolutely love the episode with her today. We talk about friendship. We talk about what she looks for in a friendship uh, when friendships end and she is also uh, the daughter of Candace Cameron Bure. She was DJ on Full House so Natasha kind of gets to talk about her upbringing with having a famous mom and kind of what that's like and I just love getting to chat with her. She lives in Dallas. We've become really good friends and so it's always super fun just having a friend in Dallas so I really think you guys are going to enjoy today's episode we also do a Reddit on Reddit segment together it's going to be so fun so I hope you guys enjoy today's episode if you do please tag us on Instagram let us know and let's just get right into today's episode hey Natasha Bure yes Welcome to Happy and Healthy. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> Welcome to Happy and Healthy. Thanks for having me on. How are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? I'm really good. You know, I uh, I took some extra time on my makeup today and I'm feeling like it's kind of beat today. Really? Yeah. Like I don't normally like like my makeup and today I like extra like my makeup. Oh, I so. thought you were saying beat like bad. And I oh was no, like, beat like. No, like you gave yourself a beat. Yeah, I okay, beat I, my face. I, yeah. I, should, no, I agree because I was going to say it looks good. Thank you <laughs> i just i still wonder i'm like should we stop saying that phrase like beat my face i feel beat. like because people yeah. feel like it's like with their beauty blender they like beat their beat, face yeah you beat yeah but then i also hear where you're like that kind of looks beat yeah you know like beat up i see what you're saying okay we <laughs> so need I a new know. we need a new slang yeah um what's your middle name valerievna what the heck <laughs> <laughs> it's russian say that again <laughs> valerievna Wow. So, yeah. My dad is from Russia. Mm -hmm. And in Russian culture, you take your dad's first name. And if you're a boy, you add Ivich. And then if you're a girl, you add Evna. So, like in American terms, my dad's name would be Valerie. But like in Russian, you say Valeri. Wow. So, because I'm a girl, you add Evna. So, it's Valeri Evna. I love that. That's Thank so you. unique. Thank you. I never knew that. Yeah. Okay, that's so funny. That's actually something like I feel like you and I bonded over very early on. Yeah. We both have like immigrant parents. Mm -hmm. I know. <laughs> and there's really something different when you have immigrant parents, I feel like. Like there's certain things that in American culture that are just so different when you grew yeah. up with a parent that has like a completely different background. Yeah. What was that like for you? Because your dad's Russian, your mom's from America. Yeah, it's interesting. My best friend, both of her parents are from Iran. And so it was... Like we also bonded on that quickly because mm -hmm. I do feel like there's just something different growing up with a parent who did not grow up in the U.S. Mm -hmm. Like just culturally and how they do things. Yeah, my dad moved here when he was, I think, 17 and met my mom. And um, I feel like I have a good split of like an Americanized life, but also mm -hmm. so much of like what he implemented to my brothers and I are very, you know, 
strict and yeah. like intense Russian culture. Mm-hmm. Um, but that I think also a lot of that comes from him being an athlete and just so intense. But mm-hmm. I like it. I love my Russian side. Yeah, I love I, that. I do. Yeah, I love to embrace that. I think it's so important because I do think a lot of people like, especially if they have immigrant parents, it might maybe like look down upon or like, oh, you're mixed or you're not mm-hmm. full American. And to me, I'm like, that's what makes America so cool. Yeah. Is that there's so many different cultures here and history and people with different ethnicities and all the things. So I think that's really awesome that you embrace that. And I also think that it's cool having my mom's side of the family. They're all born and raised Los Angeles people. And Mm. my entire dad's side of the family is all from Moscow. And so even just having relatives and aunts and uncles that celebrate, you know, holidays differently and do yeah. dinners differently. It's so fun. Like it's just such a mix. Nothing is ever the same. It's always changing and evolving. So I like it and it's fun. As far as Russian, like what parts of you do you feel like you actually still embody by being Russian? Like you said, you're very strict, but like are there other things that you're like, that's definitely my Russian side? Honestly, I don't know. I don't want to say this is like my personality, but I think that I mimic a lot of how my dad acts and I think just more of his um like stature and the way that he handles Mm -hmm. himself um he grew up in like extreme poverty in Russia so I think he had to just learn things very quickly and the way that he upholds himself I would say I probably mirror that more than maybe like my mom's American side and just like their personality like they're I wouldn't say I'm not bubbly and outgoing (laughs) but they're just very it's just different um and so I think when I hang out with my dad's side of the family I'm like are, this is the vibe that yeah I, think I just connect <laughs> my people better. my people um but you know they also love to just cook and very big on like health and wellness and all the things which I feel like cool. you know Americans are like that too but it's just it's just different and mm-hmm. um yeah yeah I want to get more into your upbringing a little bit but I want to kind of give a backstory to the listeners that don't know um so we met each other when you moved here when I moved here in September Okay. Yeah. You, yeah. I met you fairly fast fairly briefly after yeah. you moved to Dallas. Yeah. So she's new to Dallas, which is really exciting. You're an LA mm-hmm. girl and yeah. you came to Dallas. How are you liking Dallas so far? Please love I it. I love it. <laughs> I do love it. Yay. Um, I was telling some of my friends though, honestly, I feel like I can acclimate anywhere pretty quickly. Mm-hmm. I've lived in so many different cities and states with both of my parents' jobs. So I feel like this move wasn't super crazy, Yeah. Um, which is nice, but I mean, everyone has been so welcoming. You've been so welcoming and like inviting me places and to things. So I feel like I got really lucky right when I moved because it wasn't, I wasn't in isolation. Like Mm -hmm. I was just constantly surrounded by community and all that thing. So, you know, it was nice. But you're naturally a more introverted person, right? Yes. Okay. So you wouldn't even have like minded necessarily being at home. No, I would have been okay (laughs) being at home. But I'm, I was trying to make an effort to, you know, go out and make the friends that way. It's like, okay, now I have the friends and I can Mm -hmm. choose when I want to hang out and see people but I'm definitely more of an introverted person and I like spending time by myself yeah (laughs) that's so cute though I like that you're a homebody and you cook a lot and Mm -hmm. all those things and I feel like moving to a new city is so scary because like if the really the city is only as good as the people like if you're alone like you know what's the point of being in that city then if it's so amazing if you don't have anybody And I'm just so thankful that you've even just been like, you know what, I'm going to plug in, I'm going to connect and you've come to church with us. Like, it's been so fun, like having you in Dallas and y'all, she's insane at pickleball, like insane because she, so she has a tennis background. If you guys don't know, Mm -hmm. like, what are some things you think that people don't know about you? Probably the tennis thing. Like I played competitive tennis till I was like 17. Um, yeah, which was so fun. And I, literally played my first ever like time like yeah. with you and Caleb which yep. was so fun and now I'm addicted to it yeah I love it it's so fun I'm like we should play this weekend <laughs> I love she's it. so good you guys yeah it was it's it's so fun to play my brothers have and my dad have gotten really into it but it's harder I feel like it's harder to find people to play tennis with because oh yeah it's such a hard sport yeah like I could never. unless you've been playing since you were really young I feel like it's just a more difficult Mm -hmm. sport to pick up but pickleball is so fun and social and I love it so I feel like I'm playing more often and I'm enjoying it yeah I think that's why I like it because it is so social like tennis it's like you have to be serious like you have to be in it otherwise you just suck which is me but pickleball I feel like you can kind of like 
swap yeah. in and out and like have music going and like yeah. really make it fun and the court is shorter so i think that you can have conversation yeah. or chat or whatever where it's like you're mm-hmm. so far away on a tennis court and it's a little bit more intense yes. and also i grew up playing singles only in tennis mm. which was not always i'm very hard on myself so i think just doing that alone it was not really that great for my mental health because I would beat myself yeah. down but playing pickleball is so fun because I'm always with a partner and it doesn't really matter who it is you're just like encouraging each other yeah. which I well, feel like has helped me so much just I'm not the best at, that. <laughs> at encouraging well no I think I am but like you've seen me play and yeah. I beat myself up yeah and then Caleb and I get yeah. <laughs> We get a little mad at each other sometimes. I'm, he's like, I'm like, why did you do that? And I'm like, oh shoot, there's people here. Well, I'm like that if I'm if I'm like not playing great or if I'm losing, I'm so upset. Yeah. Like I just go silent. Well, I go home and I'm like, oh, idiot, idiot. Like, I'm like <laughs> mad at myself. Yeah, yeah but too. we got to play again soon because the weather we has to. been so I nice. Know. I know that last time that we played, I feel like it was perfect weather and that court mm-hmm. was so nice. I want to yeah. go back there for sure. Yes, absolutely. Okay, so for people that maybe don't know who you are, how mm-hmm. do you, how do you like describe yourself? Like, are you like actress, influencer? Like, yeah. what do you typically say? I don't even know. I feel like it's ever evolving. But I am an actress. I am a musician. I do social media full time. Um, yeah, those three. Those I are love the that. main. Yeah, but those are like very time consuming. Yeah, and they are. I think a lot of people don't give those things probably enough credit sometimes mm-hmm. because. I, especially when I lived in LA, I was friends with so many actresses and they always had to have like mm-hmm. a lot of second jobs and like a lot of yeah. like, oh, no stability, not knowing when you're going to get a call back. I mean, I tried to do it. It was not yeah. for me because it was yeah. like way too much like, anxiety of like, oh, like I tried to audition one time for Comedy Central, bombed it. I mean, really? horrible. I walked out. I was like, yeah, there's no, I'm getting that. <laughs> I knew I tanked it. So do you ever like go to those auditions and you're like, yeah, I crushed it. Or have you like left being like, idiot? Like, you know, it's interesting now because we don't go in person. So mm. everything is online. So I can, or it's like on tape. So I can control a bit more my audition and what I'm choosing to send, which I'd say most times I'm like pretty proud of it, which mm-hmm. doesn't help when you don't get it because yeah. you're like, I thought, why didn't you pick such me? Such a good job on that. And like, you get attached to these roles and things like that. But um, yeah, the audition process is a lot of rejection. And I, yeah, it's tough. I always say like, if you're someone that wants to go into that industry or whatever, like it should be the only thing you ever want to do in life because mm. it's just the success is so minimal yeah. and the rejection is so great, but it's worth it if you love it that much, right. you know? Well, also I feel like those projects take so long that like you could be, a project will literally come out like two years after filming it, right? Mm-hmm. Like yeah. what is that typical timeline? I think it depends per project that you work on. Um, the ones that I've worked on, I think they've come out closer to like a year after I filmed them. Okay. Some of them are a quicker turnaround depending on like how yeah. it's shot and things like that. But yeah, it's a lot of you work and then you have nothing and then you just wait and then, yeah. you audition and then you work again. So that's why I'm really grateful for social media and I'm grateful for music and things that I can do when I'm not, you know, acting and mm-hmm. filming and things like that. But yeah, it's a very like unpredictable and right. you know not stable business. I'm not good at that. <laughs> I'm like, I need to know what's happening, when it's coming in, what's going on. And I think that's why like, yeah, I really struggled with it, even though I, I love acting, but I don't think that was like for me. So I give you props yeah. to that because A, acting is so much harder, I think, than people to give credit. Like when you do those auditions or you try to memorize a script or like I would film myself and I'd watch myself back. And I would be like, it looks like I'm on Disney Channel. Cause like I would like overact and like over like, and it's like to make it natural is really, really hard. Something I've had to work on for many years because I grew up doing theater and theater acting is so different. It's like so overly enthusiastic. Yeah. And then also when I was younger, I wanted to be on Disney Channel and that's Same. such like <laughs> overacting and stuff like that. And so it took me a long time to figure out my groove and like mm-hmm. actually how to act in a natural way. And I, I learned so much just watching, honestly. I watched so many yeah. films and I'm like, I just want to replicate that, you know? Wait, tell them your latest project you just launched. I just did a Christmas movie. It's called A Christmas for the Ages. It's on Great American Family Channel, um, which I'm so excited about. It yeah. was such a it was such a fun movie to film and make. And in general, it's just a fun generational story, which I loved. And it followed 
my character and then my mother, my grandmother and my great grandmother and mm. kind of going through each era that that person grew up in around Christmas time. So we got to wear a lot of period um, like costumes and things like that. So we were in the 40s, the 60s and the 90s and then present Ooh. day. So that was super fun. That's something I haven't really done before and all like the hair and makeup was really um, cool and, and unique, which I enjoyed. And all, just being up there and filming with all my cast members is always fun because you kind of build like a bond and mm-hmm. become really good friends. So I had so much fun and hopefully I'll do, you know, future projects. Ooh, yay. So, yeah. Okay, you don't have to name any names, but do you have any beef with anybody in Hollywood? <laughs> um, no, I really don't. That's I feel good. like I'm like, yeah, I'm in my I'm in my pretty pretty unproblematic era. Oh, we love that era. Yeah. <laughs> Because, I mean, I feel like when I lived out there, I would hear some tea. Oh, I hear tea. And, like, I I would say maybe, like, two or three years ago, I might have had beef with some people. But now, no. Okay, that's good. I'm just good. like, no. I, I feel like I just don't it. see you being, no. like you said, a problematic well, person. And also, something about me is I'm very confrontational. So, if we mm. have a problem, you'll know about it and we'll solve it. Like, I don't, okay. I don't like to have issues with people because I mm-hmm. think it it will keep me up at night. Even if like I'm the one or you're the one that's angry, it doesn't matter who I'm like, let's just figure this out and solve this. Cause I don't yeah. want to be like sleepless nights thinking about why you're mad or why I'm mad. You oh, know, I totally respect that. I actually really don't enjoy confrontation, but I have to do it. Like it's yeah. part of life, job, marriage, friendships, like everything. But I'm, I'm so bad at just being like, you know what? Just sending the text of being like, yeah. Hey, can we please talk? Like, I think there's something going yeah. on. Uh, it's like the scariest thing for me to do. Like so scary. I think I'm worse at being kind when I have a problem. <laughs> like some people can like go about their regular day or like, how, you know, and yeah. there's like, they've like festered up these emotions. I'm so terrible. Like I truly wear my heart on my sleeve <laughs> and my emotions are so visible that I'm like, I need to say it. Otherwise I'm going to be a monster. Yeah. So, but I must rather respect that than like someone being fake and being like, Oh, Oh, we're fine. And then they go home and they're like that freaking, you know what I mean? I've had, I've had like close friends of mine do that and, you know, kind of harbor things that, you know, have affected them or whatever. And tell me like months later. And, Mm. and then that feels like fraudulent to me. Like how Mm. have we been friends for all this time and you haven't brought this up to me and I get everyone like deals with it in a different way, but I'd rather just tell you and have like a hard, yeah. not a harsh conversation, but just a, an honest one. Yeah. And then we can like move forward and probably better than how we started, you know? Totally. What do you look for in a friendship? Honesty. Okay. Honesty and loyalty. Loyalty is a huge thing for me. I am loyal to a T. Like if you're okay. my friend, I ride for you. Ride or die. Yeah. And um, so I am also very picky with my friends that I do have in my close circle and I want to make sure that they're encouraging me in the best way that they're pushing me and also just being honest like in those moments you yeah. know where maybe I need to be checked a little bit or vice versa I want to be able to have an open conversation with them and then someone who yeah is loyal I don't want you to be one person to my face and you know different to the next so I would say those are the three have you ever had like a friendship breakup Mm-hmm. I had one very recently. <gasps> no, it's the worst. Yeah. Is that, are you still like healing from that? I'm still f- figuring out like what is going on. Um, but it's the worst. It's yeah, it's the worst. It's someone I've been friends with for like basically my whole life. So mm. yeah, it's tough, but also I think there are seasons for, you know, certain people in totally. your life and that doesn't mean that they can't come back. But I think like there needs to be some separation and time for us to kind of grow and figure out what it is that we're both looking for. And Mm -hmm. if we're not serving one another in that way in that season, like it's okay to take a break, but yeah, yeah, friendship breakups are the worst. Well, it's almost worse than like an actual relationship. Yes. Cause it's like, there's so much history and you thought like, I feel like with dating, like there's always a chance Yes, we break up or we get married, like whatever. Yes. But with an actual relationship, friendship wise, it's like, no, you're in my life. Like you better not leave me. And if they do, you're like, wait, where are you going? That's what I was talking to my sister-in-law about the other day. We were saying, you know, when you're dating someone in the back of your mind, you're like, there's always a chance. So you're yeah. all, you always have a little bit of a guard, but like, especially with girls, I don't know when I meet you and we click and we become right. friends. I'm like, 
you're here forever. Yeah, you're, you're my best friend. Good, you know? <laughs> so then when things don't work out, it's like, oh, I feel like I've told you so much and you know so oh. much about me. And not that I ever think it's in a way of like, you're going to go tell my tea yeah. or anything, but it's just like, oh, you know so much. And like, where does that information live now? Because yeah. it's not within us, you know? Oh, that's so, so true. So I don't know. it that I think that's what makes me uneasy. Like if, if we're not if the friendship isn't working out and like, I'm not able to get what I need out of the friendship or vice versa. Like I understand us taking the break or, you know, not being friends in general, but like you knowing so much about me and like intimate details of my life mm. that I've really only told you. I think that makes me feel a little like, oh, I just, I don't like Are that. you like a naturally private person? Um, I would say I'm private to people I don't know very much not private to the people I do know. <laughs> like I, <laughs> if, know if I, yeah, if I become friends with you, I'm like an open book. I will tell you pretty much everything. I'm okay. not a guarded person, but if I don't know you and like, we haven't kind of crossed that threshold yeah. of like me being able to trust you then. Yeah. I mean, it makes sense. That's yeah. just like discernment. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But I wouldn't say I'm like a private, like literally could take like one or two hangouts. And if I like, you know, mm -hmm. see who you are, you have access yeah. to me. I'm good. What would make you want to pull away from a friendship? What would make you want to be like, you know what? I don't think this friendship is for me anymore. I don't like lying. Okay. Lying is like a very big thing for me. Mm -hmm. um, could be really small, like tiny lies or just like inconsistencies and in stories, things like that. Cause I just don't, I yeah. will not find you trustworthy. Um, and then also I think now I'm in a better place of understanding like what I need out of a friendship maybe than prior years but I really want people who push me in the right direction and who can call me out in those moments because I think about my mom and my brother Lev have really done such a good job of like having tough conversations with me when I need it but then also being my biggest cheerleader when I need it too mm -hmm. and I feel like that's something that I definitely look for and so if I don't feel like you're doing that for me in the same way that I would do for you, then, you know, we can be friends, but just not best totally. friends. So that's so valid. Yeah. I mean, if there isn't honesty or that foundation of transparency or trust, mm -hmm. like you don't really have anything. Yeah, exactly. Cause then like when you're hanging out, it's going to be surface level because you're not going to feel comfortable telling them certain things. They're not going to really know the things you're struggling with. Cause you're like, Oh, like, are you going to tell us to somebody or whatever. Yeah. Like, I just feel like honesty is such a pillar of any yeah. relationship. And also not that I'm sitting here, you know, saying it's tick for tack, but I also feel like there needs to be an equal level of investment. investment. Yeah. yeah. And I want to, I want there to be intentionality between us. I don't want to just be friends with someone and we talk about random stuff. Like whenever mm -hmm. it's like, let's, let's make our friendship intentional. And when I feel like I, I don't see that or that's not coming across, then I tend to sort of pull away and just hone in on the people that really are investing in mm -hmm. me because I want to invest in my friends. And I think that's something I've learned is I, like I said, I am a ride or die for the people <laughs> in my life. And if I don't feel that reciprocated, not that it needs to be like, mm. again, you know, you do this for me, I do this for you. But like, I do want to feel that it's equal. It's a two-way street, yeah. you know? So mm -hmm. if I sort if I sort of get the vibe that it's it's not that way, then I'm a little, you know, Which weary. makes sense. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. Okay, wait, I want to guess your Enneagram. Okay. I'm going to either guess a six or an eight. I'm an eight. Yes. Yeah. When you were like confrontation, yeah. I was like, that sounds like my old roommate. Because <laughs> Maddie was a strong A. I was like a, a yes. two, which now I'm like reconsidering mine. I'm not super big in Enneagram, but I do think they're like helpful, but I'm not like, oh, like it's not my identity, you know? Yeah. Like some girls walk around and they're like, yeah, I'm an Aries. And no, I'm no, like, no, okay, relax. Not That's not me. I'm definitely, um, I'm definitely an eight. I'm a very strong one. And I think that it's helped me understand why I do certain things or like my tendencies. Mm -hmm. But again, I'm not like basing my life off of it and yeah. saying, uh, using it as an excuse, which I feel like maybe some people do. Oh, or like, sure. even with like horoscopes who are like, well, I just do this because I'm whatever. And I'm right. like, huh? Yeah, I'm like, no, you can You're just so a human. choose <laughs> yeah. just not do that or yeah. do that. Or they're like, I'm in a bad mood because right retrograde yes. something and Mercury's I'm like Mercury's in retrograde. Yeah, I'm like no, you're just in a bad mood because yes. you didn't sleep enough. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Stuff like that. Yeah. What um, do you, if you don't think you're a two? What would you think you are? I would have thought, if I'm honest, you're a three. Okay, so I think I'm a three. I think I'm a three two. I could see that. But I went to this Bible study, and you know my friend Danny. Yeah. Um, 
we were all talking about Enneagram and I was like, I think I'm a three, two. And she was like, Janine, she's like, you're not a two. And I was like, what? And so she doesn't think I'm a two. I think I used to be a two, but you can change. You can change. Um, And so I think I've definitely swung more three, two, but then I also think I could very easily be a seven. Cause like I'm very much enthusiast. Like I could see that too. Big in adventure, big on saying yes, big on people, groups, fun, like, so I'm a little torn. I kind of want to retake it and see. You should retake it and see. I probably see you more. I mean, more than a two, I would see you as a three. Yeah. Just because I feel like you're very goal oriented. Yes. Like you get it done. <laughs> to and, a fault. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. But I, I see the seven too. Okay. Well, you can have like second numbers. Right. You know, like. But they always say there's like a wing. It's like three, you, two, three, yeah, four. Yeah, the wing, I believe, can only be the number that's like on either side of yeah. what it is. So if I know three, I'm not a four, though. I know I'm yeah, not a four. Um, yeah. Okay, Enneagram, <laughs> like I'm like kind of whatever on Enneagram. Okay, let's rewind. And so, okay, for maybe people that don't know you, you, um, your mom yes. is a celebrity. Mm-hmm. Tell more about that because your mom was on Full House. Mm-hmm. Her name's Candace Bure. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, most people in the 90s, like I grew up watching your mom. Mm-hmm. How was that for you just growing up with fame, growing up with a parent mm-hmm. that was a celebrity? Did that impact you negatively, positively? Mm-hmm. Just open up with that experience. Yeah. So for those who don't know, um, like she said, my mom uh, was on a show called Full House and I actually never really grew up watching it. Like it, we'd see it sometimes, but we lived in Florida when I was younger and we moved there because my dad played hockey and my mom was retired from the business. So I didn't actually really get to see my mom work or like have any concept of it until I was maybe like 11 or 12. Okay. Um, so it was kind of nice living in a place where there was not necessarily a spotlight on us. Like sure there, of course there always was, but not in the same way when we moved to LA. Mm -hmm. And then when my dad retired, we moved to LA and my mom started working again and she got on an ABC show. And, um, that was, yeah, like the first time I'd really seen her in her element. And it was really interesting. I mean, I think my parents kept us very, I wouldn't say sheltered, but they kept us in very like a tight knit group. Mm -hmm. So we always did things together and my dad was my coach growing up. So like Mm. our whole life really was just like wake up, work, work out, school, and then our hobbies or extracurriculars that we did. But we didn't spend a lot of time out, you Mm -hmm. know, like in the spotlight, I would say, which I feel like was nice because I just didn't know any different. Yeah. Um, so not that crazy to how I feel like maybe people would perceive yeah. growing up in the spotlight would be. Um, and now that I'm older, you know, I've learned a lot and just seen how all of it works and things like that. And it's not bad, I wouldn't say, because you can choose what you decide to share. Mm-hmm. And of course, like people are going to say what they want to say anyways, but you can choose how much you decide to read and look into things. I think the hardest part about it, honestly, is just probably the commentary and people making assumptions about, you know, your family and things like that. And I'm a very, like, again, to a fault, (laughs) I'm a very outspoken person, especially when it comes to people I love. So Mm -hmm. if you say something negative or you are talking about them in a not so great connotation, I'm so quick to just Mm -hmm. jump on the horse and (laughs) defend. Clench the fist. Yes. And I have made my mistakes there where I should (laughs) have kept my mouth shut and I've learned my lesson. Um, But I think that is probably just the most difficult part of it all is like seeing people talk about your family and talk about you and they truly have absolutely no idea who you are or like Mm. what you stand for anything they're just like assumptions and whatever so yeah but otherwise I mean growing up it was I feel like it was fairly fairly normal so do you feel like your parents being Christians Mm -hmm. did that have like an impact because I I feel like most times I hear like a kid that was born into like a celebrity family whatever like they get pretty like wrecked or they get into lifestyle or they get into drugs or they get into whatever. Do you feel like just because your parents were Christians like that had a really good positive impact on that whole lifestyle? Yeah, for sure. I honestly think that with both of my parents' families, they raised them in the same way that we were raised. Um, just very down to earth. And my mom was raised 
in a Christian household, they, I wouldn't say they were necessarily pursuing the Lord until like a later age. Mm -hmm. Um, but they kind of implemented that same sort of lifestyle. And so growing up, yeah, we did grow up in a, in a Christian household and went to Christian school and Sunday school every Sunday and all the things. So, um, I feel like just always having that sort of environment and open conversation obviously just helped me grow with who I am. That's not to say I did not turn my back yeah. at one point. And you know, every person has to figure it out for themselves and on their own. But yeah, I'm really grateful that, you know, my parents instilled all those values in me and like, you know, really pushed Christ's love on me so I can understand for myself, like what that looks like and also what it looks like without that, because I have experienced like a time in my life where I wasn't pursuing Christ and just how, um, empty that mm -hmm. feels and and all that so I'm I'm very grateful for just you know how they raised me yeah what are like some assumptions that you think people make about like that lifestyle or actresses or like being in a family that's well known that you just feel like are just false hmm it's a good question um well I have I have two answers to this the first answer is and it doesn't really have necessarily anything to do with like how I was raised but I feel like because I chose the same career path as my mom I kind of get pigeonholed and I have been I can remember this from when I was in kindergarten like any musical I was in any play any commercial I booked like anything it was always like oh she just got to skip the line like mm. she just got it handed to her and things like that which really hurt my feelings when I was younger because I can't help that I happen to choose the light, like the same thing right. I, that I happen to enjoy the same thing as my parents or whatever. And it's the same thing. Like my brothers played hockey all growing up and wanted to play in the NHL, just like my dad. And it's the same thing. Like they can't get drafted like yeah. by him, you know, they have to work, they have to figure it out on their own. And so that's the same thing with me. And I feel like that really got under my skin when I was younger, because it was always a topic of conversation of, you know, you didn't have to earn it yourself, which of course I understand the privilege, like no question. I'm not, mm -hmm. you know, blind to that, but also sometimes when I think people overlook the work that you put in, it's a little bit like a, yeah. a jab. Um, and then I think also the second thing, just being believers in the industry. And I feel like how they just could not be more polar opposite, you know, of, of what they're trying to push and things like that. People just make, terrible assumptions about you and mm -hmm. how you are as a person like you believe this so you must be like this yeah you know yeah and I would say that my family and I always try to uphold kindness and joy and love and all of these things and it gets quite frequently overlooked and I think that's where I tend to kind of mm -hmm. want to like say something or kind of fight a little bit because I know my family and I know yeah. myself and I know my mom and I know the people that we surround ourselves with and those people know us too, you know? Yeah. And so it's one of those moments of just taking a deep breath and understanding like people are always just going to say what they want to say mm -hmm. and you have to let them and not let it get under your skin. But yeah, I think that it definitely isn't a great feeling when you're, yeah, if you're just associated with something, then you are viewed one way you yeah, know what I mean totally yeah and it's hard because like you um people always want to like prove the, prove the people wrong yes and like the aid in you is like justice like mm -hmm. I need justice for my family justice for my name yeah and you want to defend yourself and yeah. I think sometimes that even does more harm than good because then they're like oh you really care are you really and like I've been there too where I've like over explained myself, over defended. And it almost just, yeah, made things worse where I'm like, I don't have to prove myself to anybody. If I know, and my people know that I am walking with the Lord, what I'm doing is not wrong. And like, you would hope that the people that are around you, like you, you said, you have good people around you. If you are doing something wrong, or if you are, you know, being misaligned that they would be like, Hey, like, I don't, I don't think that's it. Or that they would speak right. truth back into you, but it's hard because the public eye is never going to know that they're never going to see what's really going on behind the scenes. And right. that's where it's like, Oh, like I just want to, I want them to see. And it's like, but they don't need to see like every aspect, you know? I know. And I think that, yeah, that 
that fighter in me and like that outspoken personality that I have always wants to just not even defend, but just tell people they're wrong. You yeah. know, like I'm just like, you're absolutely incorrect. And here's <laughs> why. And you're X, Y, and Z. And my mom has been such a good example to me, especially in the past just two years. And there's been some situations that have happened that have been so outlandish, like unfathomable to me. And I'm so quick to just word vomit and like say everything and my mom is kind of the opposite and she just like will sit on her hands and pray to the lord and like allow him to deal with that and i think that's something i've really had to learn is like these are not my battles to fight they're yeah. simply not and even though in my flesh i want to say these things and i want to prove people wrong or you know not like clear my name or whatever but you know just totally. not have that that negative connotation that people may or may not have towards me or my family it is not my job. Like right. it's just not. And you're never going to please everyone. And if people don't like you, then they don't like you. And the people that know you and know your character and they love you, those are the people you're going to surround yourself with anyways. Yeah. You know, so it's been, it's been very um, inspiring to watch how my mom has really handled herself. And I mean, just like in life in general, not even with specific things, but just um, as a, as someone who's really living for the Lord and she's, um, has all these qualities that just allows her to walk through life with grace, no matter what, mm. you know, comes her way. And so I'm trying to be more like that. Oh <laughs> yeah. Are you and your mom like super close? Yeah. Oh yeah. What do you like admire about her? I admire so much. She's, she's one of the hardest working people. Both of my parents are in their respective fields. My dad, you know, being an athlete, I just have never seen somebody work harder. And, you know, in, in my mom's industry and producing and, you know, having these businesses and being an actress, like I truly just don't know two people who work as hard as they do. And, um, they do not take no for an answer. You know, it's <laughs> like a challenge, which right. I think is so amazing. And they have built these these empires from the ground up. And I remember when I was younger, my mom wasn't working or she, yeah, she was taking a break at the time. And I don't know why I just like have this distinct memory of her being on a phone call and she was just really frustrated because she was just trying to figure out, I think like how to get back to where she, you know, was prior to like having kids with work and things like that. You know, we were living in Florida and, um, and just to see where she is now, like truly at the top of her game and just like hungry for more and constantly working mm -hmm. and never quitting and like not accepting no for an answer. But like, if this doesn't work, how can I navigate and, you know, forge my own lane, which I think is so incredible. Awesome. And so having someone like that, uh, as a role model has been great. And obviously, I mean, my parents, both of my parents and I have great relationships and they've just instilled so many great qualities as like a person, which, yeah. you know, is probably more important than, you know, yes. business and whatever. But it's, yeah, I, I just, yeah, I admire them both a lot. Oh, you you seem like you have like awesome parents. And I feel like, again, like the assumptions that people could make about um, a child that's born into a family with a celebrity parent you might automatically assume like, oh, those kids are going to get so messed up. They're going to do this, da, da, da. Like you are A, so well-spoken and B, you have such a good head on your shoulders and C, like you're just so normal also. Like you're just a normal girl. Thanks. You're very humble. You've never flaunted anything or bragged or been like, oh my God, like look at my film that I'm in. Mm -hmm. And I think that is so admirable that you let your character and your work like speak for itself. And I think more people could take some notes. Thanks. So I just want to give you so a little, <laughs> a little applause for that. Thank you. Thank you. That's very kind. Okay. So you mentioned just like briefly that you kind of walked away from your faith a little mm -hmm. bit. What was that like? Like what's kind of like your testimony and summary? Yeah. So I grew up in a Christian household, like I said before, and I was always surrounded by you know, ministry life and things like that. I would travel with my mom all the time when I was younger and she'd go speak at churches. So I've known like mm. just the Christian world since I was born. And when I was maybe 14 or 15, I hit a really rough patch with my parents. Like we just butt heads like no other. And I think because at that time in my life, I was just so defiant. Like anything that they wanted for me out of spite, I would just run from. So if mm -hmm. they were pushing like a relationship with Christ and, you know, Jesus and church, I just didn't want anything to do with it mm -hmm. only because they wanted me to do it, you know? So there was probably like a year or two period where I would just 
I was just so defiant about it and not living for the Lord, even though I think deep down I never lost like my faith and I never lost belief, but I just was so stubborn and like just wanted to piss them off. Like that's really what I wanted. Yeah. And it was, it was a rough year and a half for me and I had to like change schools and like take some time off just to like rebuild like who I was. That was a very just mentally challenging time for me at the end of the school year I had like a really really rough time with my parents we were fighting like to just a very very bad level and I don't think my parents really knew what to do with me I was like this unhinged you know teenager and fighting with my brothers all the time too and so my mom actually three in like three times in one week had got told about Canacuck do you know what Canacuck is yeah 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 so she was like after the third time she's like okay this is from the lord like there's mm. just no way i'm being told about this camp i've never heard about it before it's in missouri like yeah, so random yeah, so random and by the way like nobody who goes to canacock is from california like i was the only person there it's like texas arkansas yeah, it's such like, a southern thing yes yeah so my mom looked into it and literally in like two days she shipped me off <laughs> she's like <laughs> she literally Don't come shipped back. <laughs> me off i just remember i came back into my room and there was like a trunk which you bring trunks there not oh, a suitcase yeah. and she was packing up my things and she was like you're gonna go to summer camp or whatever <laughs> and i was like no I'm not and she was like yes you are and it was for a month I went for a whole month I didn't know a single person there and it was the best month of my life like truly and I went every single summer after my brothers went and it was great but um I feel like that's really where it like changed for me and just um being poured into all the people uh who work there and then also all the campers and things like that but like Canacock seriously changed my life like it was amazing and not that it wasn't information I didn't already know or have in my heart but it just I don't know something about being there and having a perspective shift and like Mm -hmm. the Lord really working on my heart and like actually softening me to allow you know my pride to leave was like huge and so since then it's um you know been pursuing the Lord and having a relationship with him but yeah yeah, go go candace let's go yeah, she's I like know. bye don't come back until no, you change literally she's like see ya drop the attitude yeah i was That's crying so at funny. the airport i remember i was like i'm not yeah and it was the best i was like i want to go every year oh that's so amazing yeah it's so funny though because especially in the south like we would hear about these camps so much yeah and people would come back and they get these camp highs and be like i've changed and then they would go right back to their things and so there's like honestly kind of a a little bit of a negative connotation in the south with those camps because i do think a lot of parents are like fed up and they're like just go like just be gone for a month but it's also so cool that you do see the actual real testimonies of it working too yeah i know so many people also that went to that and they're like oh it literally changed my life or i met my spouse there i met Mm -hmm. my best friend there or whatever so that's really cool that those things like still actually work and you know what the thing is because you could say the same thing about me like growing up in a christian household it's like it doesn't really matter i think how you're introduced to it or whatever Mm -hmm. because it's the same thing like you could go to church for the first time with your best friends and like hear really good sermon after church and you're like amped up like i feel like that sometimes after church where i hear something so convicting and i'm like wow i am just like on fire like my Mm -hmm. convictions are set like i'm feeling good or like you know i'm gonna change this i'm gonna start living different and then you know like a few days go by and you're like okay i'm still living in the world and there's Mm -hmm. temptation and there's all this stuff but i I think what really shifted for me even after camp because of course mind you I was you know I went to camp probably from when I was like 15 till 18 or something like that um and of course I had my up and down moments but it was the people that I chose my my like that I chose to surround myself wow. with that was what was the biggest difference like yeah who am I choosing to have in my corner who am I choosing to speak life into my life mm-hmm. and who's going to call me out and I think that's why having honest friendships is so important because Mm -hmm. I need that when I'm falling off the wagon like who is gonna come and be Mm -hmm. honest with me and say you need to get back on you know what I mean so I think that that was the biggest shift and also it's tough to cut people out when you know they're not encouraging you and maybe what they're doing is really fun like I've been there you know you might have a moment of isolation and you're not hanging out with people as much and that's Mm -hmm. not fun but I think that my life has just changed so much. I think that's also why I'm so grateful to have moved here Mm -hmm. and just to meet so many people that are like really chasing the Lord and just that I know Mm -hmm. will encourage me in the right ways and, you know, not tempting me because the world is tempting. Oh, it's tempting. And Dallas is very tempting. Mm -hmm. I mean, 
like I think the difference when I lived in California, I just loved it because you're not just partying every weekend. Like you're going to the beach, you're doing bonfires, you're going on mm-hmm. hikes. Like the lifestyle is so different. And I do think here there's not much else to do. So, so many people, they just opt to like party because, or just go drink. Cause like, there's really nothing else to do besides yeah. shop and drink and eat. And so you're gaining weight, you're spending money and you're getting drunk. And I'm like, yeah. Oh, and I'm not saying that all of Dallas is like that, but I do feel like if you are not walking with the Lord, those are the temptations that people cave into here. And so it is exactly what you're saying. Like having people in your corner is everything. It is literally, I preach this all the time because it is so make or break. It's what changed my life. Like when I was not walking with the Lord, it's because I was hanging out with people that weren't walking with the Lord. Yeah, They were pushing me to do things. And if I want to walk with the Lord, they thought I was like dumb or they'd be like, eh, like that's really weird or whatever. And so man, your corner of people is everything. It really is. Yeah. And it's funny because I think that you can probably find that no matter what city you're living in, you're going to find those groups of people that are just drinking and going out and doing all these things. And then you're going to find the people that are not, (laughs) you know what I mean? So it's like in LA, I think my core best friends, I wouldn't see them as much as I could because we're all like a little bit spread out, but you know, they're, they're not the people that are doing that every night. I have some friends Mm -hmm. that are married and some that are in ministry and some, but I also have some friends that are literally going to the club every night. And like, Mm -hmm. if I wanted to join them, I could, you know? And so it's so easy to find that wherever you live and wherever you are. And so, yeah, being able to really navigate those friendships and like the timing of it all. And also I think uh, something that really I've learned over the past few years is right when I got out of high school and I didn't go to college, I had this period of like, well, I'm not in college. So I'm not making friends like my yeah. other, you know, my other community is. And then like half my other friends are kind of in high school. Cause I was friends with my brother who's only a year younger than me. And I just didn't have many people next to me and I got impatient mm. and I'm like, well, let me just go be friends with who I can. And like, yeah. who's going to have fun instead of being patient and say like the Lord will supply me the right people at the right time that I need. And there was like a period afterwards where I'm like, okay, I'm not hanging out with that many people, but it served me so much greater Mm -hmm. rather than just quantity over quality. You know what I mean? Like I'd always rather wait and have one or two people that are really incredible Mm. than all these people just for the sake of my comfort. Like I can manage, you know, that is such a bar. You guys listen to that again. Cause that is so freaking true that even in dating, like if you are lonely, you will, opt for the easier, more comfortable route that may not be healthy for you because like, you're just so lonely and you just need something to satisfy. You're like, I'll just reach for anything. And like waiting on the Lord is always going to be worth it. Yeah. I think that's such a great reminder. Okay. Uh, Oh, go ahead. No, (laughs) go. I was just going to ask you because I was like, speaking of dating. (laughs) Okay. You're single. Yes. Are you single? I am single. Okay. I know know you're single (laughs) because I've been trying to set you up with some people. (laughs) What do you look for in a person? Good question. (laughs) Um, She's blushing, guys. (laughs) (laughs) Um, What do I look for in a person? Honestly, the same things that I look for in a friendship. Like, Mm. really. Um, I look for honesty. I look for loyalty. I look for someone who's really passionate and who has a lot of goals and, Mm -hmm. you know, someone who dreams big and all those things. I want someone who's pursuing Christ. And, um, I'm, I'm very big on humor. Like if we have the same humor, I am just, I'm vibing. You got a banter. If there's no banter, get out of my face. I'm saying that was mean. (laughs) No, but for real, like actually true though, the banter is everything for me. If I've been on some dates where I was like, it felt like I was talking to a wall and I was like, I've got to (laughs) go. You know what? Like I have struggled in the past because I'm like, there's just some guys that are so kind and so Mm -hmm. nice, but there's just zero banter. And Mm -hmm. I know that I need that. Yeah. I just do like, well, you got it. Like if you're going to be with this person every single day, you got to laugh. Yes. You gotta have some fun. Like, yes. And obviously like, okay, I was preach this. I'm like, usually I feel like females go for like the loudest, funniest guy in the room. Mm-hmm. And I've kind of told girls like, okay, don't always go for that guy. Cause those are usually the guys that like need all the attention or they need everyone to laugh at them. And they were kind of like self-absorbent just a little bit. I can't blanket statement that, but I'm like, sometimes it's okay to go for like the more quiet guys. Cause those are the guys that treat you like really, really well. But regardless, yeah. it's like, if you're going to marry this person, like, 
you want to have fun with them you want to oh, laugh yeah. with them you need to like be able to pick on each other a little bit you know oh yeah i'm actually not attracted to the center of attention kind of guy like i gravitate more towards the ones that are quiet but have like the one-liners mm. and just like the very sarcastic dry humor yeah like, i love that because that's kind of how my humor is i think i can be outgoing when i need to be for sure but i also could like sit and just listen to people talk mm -hmm. and then just share when i need to share yeah um but yeah that's also i think how my dad is like mm. he's very i wouldn't say he's he's not shy but he's very reserved but then to the people that he's super closest to like he's so mm -hmm. funny probably the funniest person i know so i'm like if i don't have something like that then yeah, you're you like, know Can I marry replica? Yeah, yeah. it's funny though because we do psychologically we want something like our parents totally like i've gone i've dated men in the past that were the good parts of my dad and the bad parts of my dad yeah. and i was like oh i don't know if that's good yeah. but it is weird like how you're psychologically wired to like gravitate yeah. towards someone like your parents yeah because it's, it's really interesting it's what you know yeah 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 okay so she's single so if you're a male listening to this <laughs> slide in her dms <laughs> no i'm just kidding i've introduced her actually to like some of my guy friends and we'll yes. just you know we'll just see if anything we'll see. comes <laughs> okay let's have some fun i want to ask you some questions okay. and then we're going to move on to our reddit on reddit segment which where we talk about some juicy stuff we respond to a crazy story okay so here's some funny questions okay what would you rate 10 out of 10 what does that mean like like um that food was 10 out of 10 or like poppy's oh, 10 out of 10 oh okay what am i rating that's 10 out of 10 like something you really like in your life that you're like that's 10 out of 10 oh. <laughs> um sushi to me is 10 out of 10 good sushi yes i agree i could with eat that. sushi every day 10 out okay of 10. have you found a spot in dallas yet um you know i just went to this place i forget what it's called Okay. But I, <laughs> I'm like sick. Can't go there. Like, great. Um, but I went there and it was really good. It's like, like O S H I maybe. Oh, I know you're talking about, but I don't know. And is it like, like it's a like kind of like on a rooftop ish. It's nicer. Yes. It's nicer. Mm. I don't know. We'll drop it later in the yeah, description, yeah, yeah. but it was really good. Okay. That's a, oh, oh, and, um, Namo. I like Namo. I haven't been there yet. If you like sushi, you would love Namo. It's okay. incredible. I gotta Those are my two out. places that I've tried. Okay, next, what are you interested in that most people haven't heard of? <laughs> that most people haven't heard of. Or maybe they're not really just, yeah, like familiar with it. Huh. Like for like me. Like I was going to say, what's yours? Okay, mine's super dorky. <laughs> I love the Sims. <laughs> oh my gosh, I have heard you talk about I'm this I'm a Sims before. girl. I don't play anymore, but like if I could in another life, I would play it all the time. When I was like younger, seven hours of playing Sims. Yeah, okay. it's how I started you know my what? career. So, you know. Okay, I'm going to say something similar. Um, do you know what Pop Tropica is? No. <laughs> I'm like, you lost me. <laughs> okay, like for those listeners who know what pop like, tropica what? is you'll know because pop tropica is an educational game but mm. it is like it's not similar to sims but you go on like missions it's a video game oh. you go on missions but they're educational i don't know how to how to really describe it other than yeah. that but i mean my brothers and i used to go over my grandparents house because we weren't really allowed to use um video games when we were younger and like electronics probably smart <laughs> for your parents yes yeah. but uh, my grandparents we did mm -hmm. and so we played pop tropical all the time but sometimes when i get bored mm -hmm. i will just play it but it's like a children's game but you learn stuff um <laughs> <laughs> pure entertainment yeah no but it's like it's like historical i don't know how to explain it i'm okay. doing a terrible job i'm gonna of, download it yeah you would like it you would actually really like okay. it if you like sims comment down below if you've heard of that or played with surely it. people you're like a ride or die for prop tropica if you know about it you know what yeah. i mean yeah anyways what is something that someone should do at least once in their life i don't know i'm not really like an exciting person <laughs> <Why>? <laughs> yes, you are. i don't know like what would you say i keep making you skydiving see but i would um, never do that that's what i'm saying live abroad um, sure live abroad i've never lived abroad okay neither have i but i want to but like yeah it's my, it's still or my travel list. or you know what you know what i think every person in their life should go on a solo trip mm. like a like on a plane to a different state or different country or whatever by yourself yeah because I know there's a lot of people that are uncomfortable by traveling mm -hmm. by themselves or going on trips, but I eat it up. Like I, yeah. well, obviously, because I love spending time by myself, <laughs> but it's so, it's so fun. Like, I don't yeah. know. There's just something about being in an unknown place by yourself and like mm -hmm. having to figure it out. 
doesn't need to be anything crazy, but I just yeah. think you should. And like spend time with yourself. Why don't people spend enough time with themselves? Anyways. I completely agree. I actually wrote about that in my book. It's on chapter three. Mm. I talk about that because I completely agree. You learn so much about yourself. It's very uncomfortable and you have to talk to people. You have to socialize. Yeah. You have to be okay with not being okay. I think it's super challenging, but for some people, maybe for you, it wasn't challenging. For me, it was challenging, but I actually like really, really agree. If you're uncomfortable or like if you like spending time with people yeah. and that's who you are, then yes, it can be challenging. Mm -hmm. But I just think, I don't know, you grow so much when you're like alone, you yeah. know, because you're not, your brain is like all the way turned on because mm -hmm. you don't have anything to fall back on. I don't know. Yep. I literally completely agree. Okay. What is something that a ton of people are obsessed with, but you just don't get the point of? Justin Bieber. Oh. <gasps> That's a hot take. Whoa. You, you can leave my house now. <laughs> I love yeah. Justin Bieber. I'm a beaver. I'm a believer. Why? Yeah. What's wrong with you? No, I'm just I kidding. don't know. Wait, what do you not like I about don't him? I know. You know what? I will say this, and this is literally not to say this is the eight in me, but it is. Whenever people get excited about something and like there's a bandwagon, I will purposely hop off. Like You're a four. I, Enneagram. No. <laughs> I just don't like... I just don't like going with the crowds. Okay. I'm like, it's just, I need to but, be, I need to be doing my own thing or like, I want to come to that conclusion on my own, you know? Mm -hmm. So I think like there was probably a season where I was like, yeah, oh my gosh, I love Justin Bieber, but, and not this, no, this is no shade, no tea. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> it's really not, it's really not. But I feel like people are like, girls especially are so obsessed with them i'm just i think he's great yeah but i'm not i don't have this like dire love for him like i would say a majority of my friends do i think he's i think he's yeah. great so talented but i just i'm not at the level of hype that probably my other friends are so i'm like okay yeah i'm actually very similar like taylor swift same thing yeah i, I would say yeah if there's too many people on it i'm like i've got to get off same yeah. thing yeah but i i'm not like obsessed. but i can respect them yeah, I respect their talent. I yes. think they're like obviously amazing singers and it's a lot of work, but I'm the same way with like Taylor Swift. Yeah. I do think also like Justin Bieber, I love his music, but I feel like he's kind of become like a mean person. But yeah. maybe I'm making wrong assumptions. I feel like there's so much stuff that goes around online well, about him. I know. And then that's the thing where I'm always just like, I can't even, I don't even want to read negative things or positive yeah. things because it's also skewed. And I think I know, like I would be able to say that I know that it's all like just... You know, you don't know what's true and what's not. Yeah. So I just try to really ignore it. And I'm like, for whatever they're putting out, like I will enjoy or not enjoy, but I don't yeah. want to like hear other people's. I respect that. Perspective. Okay. Last question. What is something you've been meaning to try, but just haven't gotten around to it? I have yet to go to an NFL game. <gasps> what? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, we've got to bring you to one next season. They're really fun. I know I've been to two, maybe I've just been to one college football game. I've actually, yeah. And it was the national championships. Like it wasn't even like a oh. random like rivalry game or anything, but I didn't grow up with football right. in my home. So yeah, I just haven't gone to, I mean, I've gone to like hundreds of, you know, hockey games and tennis tournaments and golf tournaments, but like yeah basketball baseball football i feel like that's I just, so different than the south though like I here know. it's like we like no, live breathe football like everything I is know. football i know okay we it's, gotta we yeah. gotta get you i'm two. more aligned with the european sports because mm -hmm. obviously my dad but i do want to go to like football games mm -hmm. and all the things just seems so fun i see you like yeah. get dressed up and go well, to games i only got into college football because my best friend down the street her parents were really big into it okay my family too same thing because my dad's european yeah like no football like he th he literally thinks it is the world's dumbest sport he's like a bunch of men running around in tights hitting each other like he does not does not like it we watch world cup every single year oh, soccer same. basketball like that was not football was not a thing in my house it's still really not but only when i went to hang out with my american friends they were like you don't know football and so they taught me yeah and now i really like it yeah okay i know i need to those are some fun questions okay moving on we're going to end the podcast with the segment that I do now at the end of every episode. It is called Reddit on Reddit. Okay. Wow, that's such I a cute know. sound. Isn't it? I like, love that sound effect. Wait, did you reason. download that? No, it's just on the soundboard. Really? I have the yeah. same soundboard. I what? didn't know they that. Just, look. This is when Wait, you stop. When you walk in the room. People Wait, I come. have this. Maybe I just have never. Yeah, these are all like. It. I know. I need a laughing one for everything. <laughs> like, laugh Tell jokes. me I'm funny. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So 
Today's prompt, what we're going to do is we're going to read a story. It's kind of a weird one. I'm not going to lie. I'm so sorry if this is too weird. And then we're going to react to it. Okay. This is the story. My girlfriend smells. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> so this is from a 24-year-old male and he's dating a 24-year-old female. Um, to sum up my last post, I said my ex-girlfriend stunk of P-O-O-P. So she stunk of poop. I looked past it the first couple of times, but I broke up with her after the third. I didn't notice her smell the, the many times we hung out, sat in my car, or the hugs we had. I smelled poop from her when my head was on her and my nose was close to her hair. I was really immature and broke up with her in an hour after I dropped her off from our movie date. I feel so guilty from not telling her. I saw my therapist yesterday and after sobbing to her about my ex-girlfriend and my life statuses right now, she helped me realize I need to open up the conversation with my ex. I wrote out a few letters and put one in her mailbox last night. I explained in detail what she smelled like, where where I smelled it, what times I smelled it, <laughs> so she knows how I know. I also told her I missed her and that I didn't think my actions really through. I told her why I broke things off and I thought and my thought process through it. I don't want to attribute my mental health to this, having PTSD. But the expectations of SEX, kissing or even holding hands puts my body into survival mode. I'm not going to write out everything that's wrong with that's wrong with me, but I broke up with her because of the smell. It was the straw that broke the camel's back. Um, I wrote her a letter, put it in her mailbox. First thing we need to do, we need to talk about it. She said we need to talk. We talked it out. She said she's going to find a way to get rid of the smell. She forgave me. In the meantime, I'm going to work through my PTSD. Would you break up with someone because of that? <laughs> it's like such an like an abnormally crazy story like if someone really stank like would you say something 100 percent. you would yes oh my gosh I, like even hearing about like third story, dated you would be like you first smell? date i'm saying something really oh yes oh not me i don't think i could do it Oh my gosh. How would, I would you go about that? I would not make a direct comment. I would make it so indirect and be like, oh my gosh, it smells disgusting in here. <laughs> What's that smell? No, I would. Oh my gosh, smells one of the biggest things for me. Yeah. Like if a guy, I don't even like when a guy smells like nothing. I mm. want a guy to smell like cologne. It doesn't need to be overbearing or anything yeah. like that, but I want a guy to smell good. And I'm very, very overly sensitive. Like I carry deodorant with me at all times. Oh, I carry perfume I, with gum, me at all the time. Breath Same. mints, yeah. Like, I have to be smelling good all the time. And even if we're like, okay, this is such a weird thing. We'll be out. Like I could be dating a guy. And if I smell something out in the air that doesn't smell good, like we walk by a trash bin, I'm like suddenly unattracted to him. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's like, so it smells really, important to smells you. smells so important. So to me, I'm like the worst this person. Story is triggering. It's hitting like too close to home. Cause I'm like, no, this is, this is done. Yeah. He's done for but, me. But <laughs> um, if I really liked that person and like, they were like my boyfriend and they started smelling bad, I would 100% bring it up. Yeah. I want to like break up with them. And then if like it doesn't get better and I'm like, look, I just have to be honest, like yeah. this is not working for me, then yeah. But surely I would be bringing it up. I would bring it up eventually as well. I think smell is so important. And also my strongest sensory on me is my nose, which is yeah, annoying. Like too. I can smell from a mile away. Me too. And so if you have bad breath, BO, whatever, like it's, I literally like I get a headache. I can't even like think clearly. Well, also I think smells when you do smell poor, it just makes me think you're dirty. Yeah. Like, and I'm, I'm also very hygienic and cleanly person. Like I brush my teeth multiple times. I floss, mm -hmm. wash my face multiple times, shower. Like I'm just, I like to be clean and like, yeah. don't like to feel dirty. So I think if you smelled bad, I would just think you're like a dirty person, even right. if you're not. And like, you can't help it, which is why I would be like, Hey, like, let's talk. <laughs> something's up. We got, we got a chat for sure. You know? Yeah. I don't think this guy is crazy for doing that because like, especially if it smelled like poop, poop? <gasps> that's rough. Like, like what? I couldn't. Yeah. In the be, hair? He's saying it's in her hair? I know. That's really, really rough. I don't think he's crazy, but I do think it's good that he eventually like came to her and was like, hey, okay, this is why. But also it seemed like they were pretty new in. So maybe he didn't yeah. like feel like he owed her anything, but I'm glad he at least explained it. To I'm her. shocked that he did that. Yeah. Do if you I've, think you wouldn't? If I was, if I was that new with somebody, look, if I was on like a first date with you and like, I would say how I brought it up like right. indirectly, but let's say we kept going on like a date or two and I was still smelling it to me. I'm just like, yeah, peace. 
if out. it's super super new and you don't have that like equity yeah, then you're like you know what like, this isn't for or me. yeah unless you were like a friend of mine before and then we decided like to start going on dates i'd tell you out of respect right you know but if like i just met you whatever mm-hmm. and then and you smell bad i'm like yeah <laughs> <laughs> all right it's an iffy thing because you're like do you, it's like when someone has something in your in teeth, teeth in your and teeth. you just met him and you're like do i say something do i know some people um, what do you think about that because some people like love and want people to tell them. And then I feel like some people get very embarrassed by it. I would like, want someone to tell me. Me too. Like, you don't have to make it weird. Like, I've had someone straight up tell me. And I've been like, oh, thank you so much. And I'll literally, like, fix it. Or, like, let me run to the bathroom. I would rather that than be on, like, a date. And there's, like, a full-on piece of broccoli in my front teeth. Or, like, something, like, on, like, your like a food on your face yeah, or something. And somebody totally. not saying something. I would rather someone tell me. So, this is your sign, guys. Yeah, you should tell. <laughs> Okay, that was our Reddit on Reddit segment. I feel like that wasn't the best one, but honestly, we were scrolling for a bit. Yeah. And I couldn't find a really juicy one. So maybe next episode, stay tuned for that. Well, Natasha, thanks for coming on Happy and Healthy. Thanks for having me. That on. was so fun. I know. This was so fun. I it feels loved like just it. a little girl's chat. I know. That's what I love. Just like a little gab. Yeah. Okay. Where can my followers find you? You can find me on Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, all at Natasha Beret. Go follow her, guys. And thanks for coming on Happy and Healthy. Thanks for having me. Bye, guys.